Allah nak ni. Actually, it is a tough issue to to present, but we have to know about basic science because it is the future science. The basic uh, science deals with cells, molecules, and genes, and this can yield us to, and help us to know the mechanism of disease, the markers, the new drugs, devices, interventions, and this can be translated into clinical research, and then can be transferred to guidelines and to general practice. Actually, medicine is very expanding. Throughout the years, we did develop here, we have basic science. It became much away from the clinical practice, and we need the translational medicine who can bridge the basic science into the clinical practice. Uh, background knowledge uh, about stem cell therapy, and where are we right now? We did pass through the first generation cell therapy, uh, including hematopoietic stem cells, mesenchymal stem cells, and these were not cardiac committed cells. Then we shifted right now, and these were guidelines, and the, the uh, European uh, Society of Cardiology did focus in the recent Congress about the second generation uh, stem cell therapy, the cardiac committed stem cell therapy, and we have the next generation third. About the second generation, we do have two types of cells, they are the embryonic stem cells derived from the blastocyst and the adult stem cells that is reprogrammed once more to attain its uh, pluripotency, what's known as uh, induced pluripotent stem cells. We have the embryonic stem cells and the induced pluripotent stem cells. Right now, embryonic stem cells, we do have an ethical issue concerning its derivation from uh, IVF embryos and the future without uh, ethical concerns regarding the induced pluripotent stem cells. What about genetic, uh, stem, uh, genetic uh, therapy? There is a breakthrough, what's known as CRISPR-Cas9 uh, technology. It includes the, the, the way to do genomic editing. We have a mutation in a certain gene producing a certain disease. We can induce genetic editing through the CRISPR-Cas9 technology, induce some nucleotide complementing with the incriminated gene, induce double break in the gene, then we induce, we have the donor DNA we want to reintroduce in it, and becomes, we change the mutant gene into a normal gene, with normal uh, uh, gene once more be attained and change in the pattern of the disease. Moving quickly into the new highlights right now, we do have the stem cell therapy. We used it to understand inherited cardiac disease and test treatment. Stem cell therapy to regenerate the heart after myocardial infarction and new molecular mechanism in the cardiac disease. And finally, the novel beneficial actions for existing drugs. First of all, from the use of stem cell therapy in knowing the etiology of disease, we used the induced pluripotent cell cells we just mentioned, the right cardiomyocytes, for patients with mutation in the troponin I, and we did knew that it's involved in uh, impairment of the calcium handling, and this will lead to hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. By knowing the gene and the involved uh, uh, transcription factor, we can di direct our therapy to it, and we can treat the disease. Also, the CRISPR-Cas9 gene we just mentioned was just used to correct the protein kinase A gamma 2 subunit gene mutation. We know that it induced wolf parkinson white syndrome, and this shows the, uh, the variability in the rate of the beating of the cardiomyocytes like there compared to the control cardiomyocyte. By using this technology, we Recorrect and by shorting the market variability in the uh, rate of uh, be a beating of a cardiomyocyte, and we can treat the old Parkinson White syndrome derived from the PECA G2 gene mutation. And this can be used to correct at the level of the zygot S phase to induce a fully repaired embryo. But this 
can carry healthcare concerns, we have to resolve before, uh, for adopting this medication. Secondly, we used the embryonic stem cells to regenerate the heart post myocardial infarction. The embryonic stem cells were used in a rat model derived from the epicardial cells. They were co-cultured with the cardiomyocytes and re-implanted in the rat model. It did markedly increase the fractional shorting and improve the, the function of the cardiomyocytes after uh, sustaining a myocardial infarction. What about the induced pluripotent stem cells? The induced pluripotent stem cells, be, uh, as we know, adult stem cells reprogrammed once more to reintroduce its immune uh, pluripotency to, uh, can be differentiated into cardiomyocytes, uh, blood vessels, and fibroblasts. These are a big model. They culture the immune induced pluripotent stem cells. We have billions of cardiomyocytes implanted it once more in the heart of the peak after sustaining a myocardial infarction, then this, we can see the ejection fraction dropped after myocardial infarction, and it did normalize after re-implanting the sheets of cells of induced pluripotent stem cells. This is, can be uh, uh, applied in human models and randomized trials to know its results. What about new molecular mechanism in cardiac disease? We know that the TBX5 transcription factor is involved in the cardiac development and its loss can lead to the development of arrhythmia. But patients with heart failure, we did find that the TBX5 is downregulated in patients with heart failure. So, further uh, study of this, we did find that the TBX5 knockout mouse this leads to conduction defects, as we see in heart failure, there is widening in the width of a QRS complex. Also, there is an increase in the sudden cardiac death. And by further study, we did find that the TBX5 acts upon channels and gap junctions, and subsequently leading to conduction defects and increased sudden cardiac death in heart failure. So by targeting these new targets, and TBX5, we can reduce the burden and of morbidity and mortality in heart failure. Also, toll like receptor 3 was incriminated after further study in development of aortic valve calcification. We know that aortic valve calcification is an important issue in the elderly group, especially in the Western society, and lead to severe aortic stenosis. We did study in animal models that targeting and agonizing that toll like receptor 3 lead to the, the, the rats with, without this uh, act, the action of this receptor. We did, have, uh, we did develop any calcification at all. Also, what about cardiac fibrosis? We know cardiac fibrosis is an important issue in cardiology. It, is, it starts with uh, TGF beta stimulation, uh, transforming ghost factor beta stimulation, lead to fibroblast activation, fibroblast specific factor leading to fibros. We target first the transforming this factor beta, okay, but this led to market side effects. But through further study, we did find that interleukin 11 is critical for transforming the inactive fibroblast in active into active myofibroblast. So by targeting interleukin 11 in mice, we, had, we did have a protection from heart and kidney fibros. And this carries important insights into the future. As we have seen in the carotinomab in the cancer study, we did find a, a clear benefit later on, and this can be put into a clinical benefit. Lastly, we all know that the CK9 inhibition uh, did reduce mace in the Fourier study through decreasing non fatal myocardial infarction through coronary revascular by 20%. This was explained by its lipid lowering effect uh, reaching about 59% from the baseline. But new uh, insights from the basic science. 
Two means please. Last one. We did find that PCSK9 is a co-activator of platelet function. We did that PCSK9 is present in the megacardiocyte and certain platelets. It actually, it is, its effect is double in patients with stable angina and type 2 diabetes. So, and we did find its action through, it increases the sensitivity of human platelets to epinephrine. So, through recombinant PCSK9 inhibition, this can lead to reduction in the plated hyperreactivity, especially in patients with diabetes. This can be further explained why PCSK9 inhibition can lead to cardiovascular benefit, especially in diabetes, and this may lead to other further sub-study on diabetic patients with dyslipidemia, and its action is beyond the lipid lowering. It, it's actually view through decreasing the hyperreactivity in platelets. So, to sum up, take home messages from basic science. Stem cells are valuable tools for understanding disease mechanism and treatment. New molecular pathways reported at this conference hold promise for future therapies, and PCSK9 inhibitors may have unsuspected additional effects. And thank you.